Ok, wait. Wee! <laughs> Harry was stuck. I destroyed the set already. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hi, I'm Leah, and today I'll be answering a series of assumptions about me. I have Googled myself, but I think the only things that pop up, right? I popped up on Wikipedia once under CJC Notable Alumni, and then someone deleted it after that. So I'm not a Notable Alumni anymore. Okay, thanks, CJC. Ah! Okay, wait, I make sure. Ah! Oh my god. No, the first one being Leah hates being known as the Zula girl. Oh wait, wait, wait. I'll be very honest, I don't hate being known as that. I feel like it's natural. If you appear on any kind of YouTube channel that has like multiple faces and multiple personalities, right? People will know you as like, oh, that girl from like yourself, that girl from Zula. It's like very natural. So I don't hate it. It's just that I make fun of it a lot. So that's why people think that I hate it, I guess. Nowadays, people don't really know me as that. People know me as like, oh my god, you're the pop mark girl. <laughs> They're like, yeah! I don't know which is better or which is worse. It was very many years of uh, building up the brand with like a huge team, but I felt that it was time for me to move on to doing other content and more personal content, like things I wanted to do on my own, because I felt that that was what I was interested in. And if I don't do it now, I'm going to be old already. And nobody's going to care about me, so I better do it when I'm slightly relevant. So yeah. Leah feels like she overshares her personal life on social media. I think I share, but not overshare mainly because even when I was hosting, we will talk about our own life experiences and things. And those topics and stuff, right, are not things that people around me don't already know. I don't really talk about controversial topics that are trending on the internet unless I really feel very, very strongly about it. Mainly because I feel like I want to keep my content a space where I just want to talk about things that happen to me and if you relate to it, I'm more than happy to like bring you to be part of like the community and to enjoy the same things that we like doing. For example, pop art or even like fashion. Korea, oh my god, my Korean content. Um, that was something a lot of people could resonate with. I enjoy doing things that people resonate with rather than like giving my opinion on controversial things in a sense. Leah was born with a silver spoon, so she had it easy. Who said this? I do come from a well-off family. I don't think I was born with a silver spoon because I think my parents, since I was young, have taught me to be quite independent. And they are the kind that like, they really, even, they, even though they got money, they would be like, no, I'm not going to give you, you're going to work hard for it. So I didn't even go on exchange because my parents wouldn't want to, they didn't want to pay for my flight ticket to go overseas. So I worked. I worked since I was 16. Honestly, on the way until now, I never not had a job. Yeah, but I wouldn't say Silver Spoon. I don't, I don't think I'm really that bad. Yeah, but I mean, you can perceive it however you want because all you see is what I show on the internet. Leah thinks she knows fashion, but she is just buying expensive clothes to flaunt on her socials. I mean, I didn't freaking say I know fashion. I just like to wear clothes, you know? So whatever you're saying, I guess is correct. First of all, I never claim to be like a freaking stylist. I never claim to be like someone who is like the most fashionable in Singapore or whatever. I don't claim to be fashionable, but if people tell me that I am, then too bad lor. <coughs> Leah went solo in her career because she felt underappreciated. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't feel underappreciated by my team. Everyone there is really just working very hard. Maybe I felt a little underappreciated in terms of like maybe opportunities that I could have gotten. Maybe the growth that I wanted. To say that they didn't give it to me is a lie. Not many people in the company could have benefited from also. But did I want more? Yes. But could I get more? Maybe at that point in time, no, because of situation that particularly that brand was in, like Zula was in. Ah, if Leah could, she would rather live in Korea. I thought about it, but I feel one, mainly because my audience is mostly in Singapore, one. And two, when I was in Korea, I really felt that I didn't have the opportunity to mingle around with people, which I managed to make a few friends in Korea, like just from going to concerts and things like that. You know, would I rather have that kind of friendships over there rather than treasure my friendships that are already existing in Singapore? And I'm the kind that I went there, I didn't go there to chase K-pop idols kind, you know. Like, I just enjoyed the fact that I was in another country doing my own thing. Not this question! Leah makes her whole personality about pop mart and fashion. I'm like, not me literally accepting that this is an assumption about me because at the start I was like, yeah, I was a Zula girl, now I'm the pop mart girl, you know. If anything, people want to mention K-pop, but nobody mentioned K-pop here, so I guess I'm not doing enough K-pop content. I think you just have to have a niche when you are a content creator. And if this is my niche, then I'll just accept that it's my niche lah. I think I've spent a total of probably like a few hundred per month. And I don't think it's that much, like maybe like... 500 plus plus because I'm lucky enough that Pomat uh, and I are like not their friends are but I work with the team sometimes uh, so they do give me like um, products sometimes in exchange and then sometimes brands ask me to do like a 
TikTok in exchange for like five pop mark box. So I'm like, yeah, why not? You know, I don't think I spent as much as people would have thought because of the way I output my videos. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Leah has been called an influencer even though she clearly is one. I do agree with this because every time I say the word influencer, I go. Hah. I hate it because I hate the term and I hate that it's coined with a very very negative connotation. What 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 else am I gonna say? I'm like a KOL. Am I a content creator? Obviously, I'm a damn influencer lah. But do I want to be associated with the negative connotations? No. But it is what it is, and I will continue to make fun of it, even though I am. I know I'm one of them. Oh, Leah is like the un agony in her friendships. Sometimes I give my opinion when it's not wanted um, to my friends but I do it anyway because I'm a Virgo and sometimes I just want to solve problems but nowadays I, I, I know like okay I'll ask like do you want my help or like you just want to like rant to me you know like what's the situation I don't know whether I give great advice but you know even if I give great advice I don't listen to my own advice so. <laughs> Oh my god <laughs> What? It's so sudden here? Yeah? Leah doesn't wish to settle down as she enjoys her freedom Last time, maybe a few years ago, my mindset was like, okay, like get a partner, then buy a house, get married, settle down. I thought that was like literally the way to go. Until I felt that, you know, I was just doing it for the sake of convenience and not because I really wanted it. And it's not necessarily because I enjoy my freedom, it's just because I feel that it's not really aligned with what I'm currently doing now, or like my growth in my career. Um, yeah, I'm dating someone. Long term or not, I don't know lah, but yes, I am open to dating, yes. <laughs> oh my god, Leah is afraid of being irrelevant as younger personalities emerge on the internet. Adore, obviously. What the heck? Like, this kind of thing, right? Is don't you say one. The lifespan of an influencer is bloody short. Like, you can be relevant for like one year and then the next year people are like, who are you? Like, why do we care about you anymore? I know that it's not gonna last forever. Um, of course, ideally, it would last me until I'm like 50 years old and I make a lot of money and I can retire. I aim to make as much and earn as much and do as much as I can during the time frame where I am relevant so that at least I have some investment that if I want to do a business in the future, I can go and work on something in the future with like whatever I've earned. Okay, no more. Is that all? Oh, that's okay, like quite safe. Lah. But I think I remember a lot, sorry. <laughs> Obviously, I don't want to stick on the internet to clear up anything about myself. Like, to me, it's like, if you want to think this of me, then go ahead, you know? Okay, to clarify, I still appear on Zula and TSL because I'm freelancing for them also. So I really, really, really want to grow my YouTube channel. I want to be um, SG Emma Chamberlain, but I know it's very impossible lah, but I try, okay? Thank you for watching this episode of Assumptions About Me. If you like this video, remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below and let me know what else you want me to do next time, I guess. Yeah, bye-bye!